Okay, I think we have everybody ready and everybody's on. And everybody's ready to listen. Okay, so this morning, we are gonna start with wit and wisdom. And we're gonna go back to our story, why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears. And we're gonna take a deeper exploration. You know, we use that word in wit and wisdom a lot, don't we? A deeper exploration means we read a book more than one time. We go back and look at the pictures and illustrations more than one time. We talk about the words more than one time. Because should you only read a book one time? Or do you think you should read it more than one time? More than more than one time. Definitely more than one time, right? You can learn so much. Sometimes you're listening, but you miss things. So it's definitely important for you to read something and look at it as a deeper exploration. Okay. Now, a, another word for deeper exploration is our big. Do you remember our big what? Our big. Our big idea, right? Our big idea. Okay. So listen, in Wit and Wisdom in Module 4, we've been learning about what makes the world fascinating. Do you remember what our essential question was? What makes the world fascinating? And they always had to do it with me, and they had to say, fascinating. Fascinating because this isn't fascinating when you're just sitting here like this and I'm reading like a robot and I'm bored and this is not fascinating, is it? No. So you would always say, can you do it with me? What makes yeah. the world Whoa. I heard Jamie. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Now in this story, why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears we said that it was a folk tale is a folk tale something that is real <laughs> lily grace is a folk tale something that is real no no it's just a story right it's been told watch say over and over and over again, which means sometimes when you tell a story over and over and over again, the real story gets lost. And sometimes people make it out to be a bigger story, a more exciting story, a more fascinating story over time. But it's not necessarily real. It might have been something that started off real. But by the time a story or a folk tale has been told over and over again, things tend to get a little exaggerated, okay? Um, now, a story is not usually something that's written. It's something that's told, right? So a lot of times your grandparents will tell you a story, maybe a story of when they were young, or your parents might tell you a story about when they were young. So usually a story is something that's not written, and you don't usually know who the original author is. So a lot of times, when you listen to a story that's been told over and over again, like the Three Little Pigs, we read many different versions of the Three Little Pigs, and we don't know who the author is, do we? So the author is something called unknown. Can you say unknown? Unknown. Yeah, that means we don't really know who the author is. When it's been told many times, the author is unknown. Now, I'm going to share screen with you because I want to show you something kind of fun about reading a story. In a story, y'all, there's something called a chain of events, okay? A chain of events are what happens in the story. Now, let's look. Let's talk about something that happened at the beginning of the story. I just want y'all to put your listening ears on for a second, okay? 
So I'm going to mute just so we can all put our listening ears on at this point, okay? Good morning, Kaylee Martin. Glad you're on. Okay. At the beginning, well, I'm showing you. Can you see it? I can't see myself, so it drives me crazy. There we go. At the beginning of the story, the iguana comes through and says, one morning a mosquito saw an iguana drinking at a water hole and the mosquito said, iguana, you will never believe what I saw yesterday. Try me, said the iguana. The mosquito said, I saw a farmer digging yams that were almost as big as I am. What's a mosquito compared to a yam, snapped the iguana grumpily. I would rather be deaf than listen to such nonsense. Then he stuck two sticks in his ears and went off, meck, 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 through the weeds. So watch right here. I'm going to put up, see this domino? I'm going to put up a domino because what happened first in the story was that the mosquito was telling a bigger than life story. And the iguana just didn't want to hear it. So part of our chain of events is what happens at the beginning of the story. But then, I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. But then the iguana, and I'm just gonna kind of paraphrase and give you a short version. Okay, listen, James Hudson, I'm gonna put you on mute until I'm done, okay? So just leave it just like that for now. The iguana was grumbling to himself when he happened to pass a python. Look at him moving. Look at the python moving. Now, the python tried to go into the rabbit hole. Oh my goodness. So that's what happened next in the chain of events. And after the python tried to go in the rabbit hole, guess what? What did the rabbit try to do? Well, the rabbit jumped out of the rabbit hole and tried to escape. That's what happened next. But then again, a crow and a rabbit came into the story. So I'm gonna add one for the crow and one, I'm sorry, for the um, crow and the monkey. Sorry, not the rabbit. The crow and the monkey. Look at all the dominoes. These are all the things that have already happened in the story. Then came the owl. And oh my goodness, the owl just loved her babies. The owl just loved, loved, loved her babies. Uh, they feared that the sun would never come back. The night grew longer and longer. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. But then so I have them all on mute. Look, cameo. Y'all wave. Say good morning. Wave to Mr. Williams. Hey, y'all. Say good morning. See babies. Yes. <laughs> Tell Mr. Williams, say, we'll see y'all Thursday, okay? Okay, next in the chain of events, the monkey did what to the owl? Oh my goodness. He hurt that baby owl, didn't he? Uh, that's another part of the story. And um, now what happened next was unfortunate because the monkey created mischief. He was being very mischievous and he did not want to accept blame for what had happened. So they were summonsing all the different animals that he pointed the finger at. And he said, oh no, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. And so next they called the next animal that came. The king called for the crow to come. Oh my goodness all the things that happened in this story. And then the Lion King called for the rabbit to come. Ooh, uh, he said it wasn't me. And then the Lion King called for the Python who came slithering to meet with all the council. But guess what? Now the iguana was not at the meeting for he had not heard the summons for the iguana to come. Oh my goodness, all these important things that happen. And a chain of events means that it has to happen in the right order. I didn't hear you. I didn't see you, said the iguana. Because he had what in his ear? He had sticks in his ears. Oh my goodness, who did the iguana say it was? 
He said it was the mosquito's fault. Everybody's pointing fingers at everybody and no one's taking the blame for themselves, do they? Meanwhile, the mosquito had listened to it all from a nearby bush. Did the mosquito ever accept the blame for what had happened? <coughs> he did not, did he? But we know what happened in the end. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. And at the end, the African tried to swat the mosquito. Okay. Take yourself off mute now, because now we're going to see what happens at the end. Okay, go ahead. I'm sending you a message to take yourself off of mute, okay? Ma, how do you take myself off of mute? Yeah, okay. okay, now here's the exciting part. Do you see all my dominoes? Raise your hand if you see dominoes. I know. Yes. Hey, watch what's going to happen. Colt sees them. Eloise sees them. Nace, do you see the dominoes? Oh, let's take Nate off mute. Um, Lily Grace, do you know how to take it off mute so I can hear you? Okay, go ahead and do that so I can hear you. I want to be able to hear you. <laughs> Lily, if you don't know how to do it, go ask Mama to take it off mute for you, okay? Is it the, is it the red thing? Hello. Hold on. Why are you putting your finger under there? Okay, James Hudson, sit real still for me. Okay. This is the beginning of the story. What part of the story is this? Middle. The middle. And what part of the story is this? Yeah, the end. Very good. So all of these things, all of these chain of events happened. And each time something happened, something else happened. And each time something happened, something else happened. But guess what happens when you have a whole lot of little somethings? Watch what happens. <gasps> what happened? A disaster happened. And the whole time I was putting up those dominoes, I was really hoping they weren't going to fall. Oh my goodness. So with every small event that happened, a big something happened at the end of the story. So I put up one domino for each event that happened in the story. And the final event, we knocked them down and they all fell. So it's kind of like saying all the little things lead up to one big something, right? Say all the little things add up to one big. big. That's right. Okay. So all the little things led up to the big idea, the essential meaning of the story. Why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears. Okay, so I'm going to tell you, what do you think the essential meaning of the story is? If you have an idea, and it's okay to be right, it's okay to be wrong, what it is I need you to do is just to try. What do you think the big idea of the story was? Raise your hand if you think you know, and I'll look. Let's see. Alex, what do you think this big story was about? What do you think the meaning of the story was? I think it's about, I think it was about like the, what I, I think it's about mm -hmm. the jungle or the rainforest or the mosquitoes bug in the ears. Okay, so you think yeah. it's about a mosquito who goes in people's ears who lives in the rainforest? That's part of it, but is that the big idea? This story has much yeah. bigger meaning. Parker, what do you think, honey? Do you have any idea? Uh, Parker, there was a lot of finger pointing going on in the story, wasn't there? Wasn't me, it was you. Wasn't me, it was him. It wasn't me, it was her. Wasn't there a lot of finger pointing going on in the story? Yeah. Kaylee, I'm gonna have to get you to take yourself off uh, mute, Kaylee. Kaylee Allen. 
you know how to do that, Lou? There you go. Kaylee, tell me, what do you think the big idea of the story was? I wonder why mosquitoes buzz in your ear. Oh, that's a wonder. That's what we're wondering. That's a question. But maybe it's not about um, lying. Maybe it's about telling the... What's the opposite of lying? If you don't lie, you're telling the... The truth. Very good. Also, accepting... Um, blame for what maybe you did instead of pointing the finger at somebody else. It talks about how things go from little lies to big lies and then there's a big event and it's also very important to know that things are not always as they seem. Was the iguana purposefully ignoring everybody? Was the iguana purposefully not listening? In the beginning, he was. He didn't want to listen to who? The um, right. mosquito. He didn't want to listen to the mosquito at the beginning, so he stuck sticks in his ears, and then he forgot they were there. So he wasn't not purposefully listening to the python or the owl or the monkey. He'd put those sticks in his ears, and he had forgotten, didn't he? Okay, now in the story, let me move my dominoes. A chain of events. Right. In the story, why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears, there's a word that we've learned about in kindergarten. Say onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. This is like the first time I ever tell my students this word, they get the biggest kick out of saying it because what? it's such a silly nonsense word. And bam. Onomatopoeia. What do you think onomatopoeia means? What do you think onomatopoeia means? Do you know? Because we learned about it. A different answer. A different what? No, it doesn't have anything to do with an answer. It's a sound word. When you have an onomatopoeia, it's a word from a sound. So sounds don't really make words, but if I say boom or bam or slam, you have to have a word to use when you're writing about a sound, and that would be an onomatopoeia. Now, this story uses lots of words when the animals are moving. Let's turn to page two and let's look at the iguana and think about what sound words he uses. Look right here. It says, then he stuck sticks in his ears and went off. Mech, mech, mech. the reed. Hey, right, y'all sit real still. Okay, I think I found out who it was. Okay, listen. Then he stuck two sticks in his ears and went off. Mech, mech. Mech, mech through the world. Is mech a real word? Parker, say that for me, Dad. Is mech a real word? It's not, is it? But it's explaining how he's moving. Do you think the iguana is moving fast? Nice. Look at Miss St. Romain. Shake your head yes or no. Do you think the iguana is moving? Yeah. He's definitely not moving fast. He's moving slow. Can you say it with me? Mech. 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 Good job, Kaylee Martin. I see you doing it. Good job. Now, he's walking very slow. Look on page four. Listen to what we hear. We're going to hear an onomatopoeia. up here. Sound words and sound effects. Okay, so listen. The iguana did not answer, but lumbered on, bobbing his head. 
So they're saying when he bobbed his hand like this. Bottom in. Bottom in. Bottom in. Lily Grace, you kind of look like a iguana when you were doing that. Can you do that with me? Bottom in. Bottom in. Which means his head is going what? What's his head doing? Going up and up and down. Up and down. Now listen down here. <clears throat> the when the rabbit. Oh, I don't want to put y'all on mute. I'm gonna have to start getting you to use hand signals and head movements, head bob. Okay. When the rabbit saw the big snake coming into her burrow, she was terrified. She scurried out through the back way and bounded, crick, 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 across a clearing. Uh, the rabbit was afraid. Do you think the rabbit was moving quickly or slowly? Alex, do you think the rabbit was moving quickly or slowly? Quickly. Uh, Alex, why do you think that the rabbit was moving quickly? Because he was fast. It can hop a long ways. It can hop a long ways because it's kind of little. It can hop a long ways because it's little and fast, like you said. What was it trying to get away from? The bow snake. The, the python, right? The snake, that boa, whatever you want to call it, whatever it is, it's yucky, scary, and nasty. Okay, so oh, he was really I'm bored to this. Yes, the onomatopoeia that we used in this story to show the words moved and jumped quickly was crick, 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 across the clearing. Um, you know what else? Wait, there's a funny word. Listen to this one. The first likely place he, which is the python, found a rabbit hole, and in he went. Uh-oh, y'all. Y'all quit taking it off on mute. Quit taking it off mute right now. Because Miss St. Romain wants everybody to be able to hear. Let me make sure I got everybody right. Raise your hand if you have an answer, okay? All right, listen, the first likely place he found was a rabbit hole and in it he went, wasu wasu, wasu wasu, wasu wasu. What do you think that means? The python, yeah, look, I see Kaylee doing her head like the python. He's moving back and forth and back and forth. Say wasu wasu, wasu wasu, wasu wasu. Does the snake actually make a sound when he's moving side to side? Does he say side to side to side to side? Or does he make a word sound like an onomatopoeia? Wasu wasu, wasu wasu, wasu wasu. So an onomatopoeia is a sound effect. And then we create a word for that sound effect, okay? Right now, the sound effect we're using is mute, quiet. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do one more. Okay, on page five, look right here. And then I'll take you off mute. A crow saw the rabbit running for her life. He flew into the forest crying, caw, caw, caw. Wait a minute, thumbs up or thumbs down? Is ka ka? Is that a word? Is that an actual word? I see a head shake. I see a thumbs down. Ka ka is definitely not a word, but it's a sound effect. It's the sound of the bird. So it's an ana mana pia. Okay, I'm gonna take you off mute. Go ahead and unmute, friends. Okay, all right. Now, what sound or what onomatopoeia do you think the owl makes? Let me hear you. What sound does the owl make? Whoa, coughing is not the sound that he makes. What sound, what sound do you hear that the owl makes? 
I'm gonna let you take yourself off mute so I can hear you. Go ahead, if you're off mute, I wanna hear you. What sound does the owl make? Woof, 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 right? Oh, I hear it now. Very good. Now, by the way, look right here. If I wanna write who, I have to make a sound word like this. H. I just wrote the owl sound. What sound was it that the bird made? What sound was it that the crow made? Tree. Okay, very good. Make the owl sound one more time. Make the uh, make the crow sound. One more time. Listen. Say, sit still, James Hudson. Say, Anna Mana Pia. So I want to tell you that when you're reading a story, the sound effects transport you someplace else. Where did we go in this story? Do you remember where we went? Africa. West Africa. Very good, James Hudson. Okay. One more thing I want to show you. I'm going to stop share this screen and start a new one. And we're going to go to our repeated language chart. Okay. Let's put on our listening ears. Do you think you can read it with me? Read it with me. What's the title of our repeated language chart? Lions roar. Lions roar. Okay. If you can do it with me, do it with me. Lions roar. Eagles roar. Leopards. Cheetahs. Eagles glide. Monk lizards. Lizards crawl. Monkeys crawl. Monkeys. Snails creep. Ants creep. Fledglings cheep. And there's a comma right there. So were we finished? Period. No. Birds, what do birds do? Birds. Have you ever heard a bird? Sometimes they'll say a bird's song. So birds what? Sing. Birds sing. sing. Very good. And then, uh oh. Now, wait a minute. This has to be a word that rhymes with sing. What do wasps do? Swing. Swing. Birds sing. Wasps swing. Sing. Yes. And there's my comma. Am I finished yet? No. Say panthers. Panthers. Panthers stalk. Panthers stalk, which means they're sneaky. What do people do? My rhyme with stalk. If panthers stalk, people. Oh, give me water. If people, if panthers stalk, what would rhyme with stalk? What do people do? What are we doing right now? 
Oh. Okay, look right here. I'm going to highlight it. Can you read that word right there that I just highlighted? Catter. Panthers, stalk, and people. Catter. Talk. Talk. Say stalk and talk. Let me see you, Lily Grace. By the way, I'm going to put an end mark. Raise your hand when you know what end mark did I just put on our repeated language chart? Period. A period. What does that mean? They were finished. They were finished. Very good, Lucy. Okay, lions roar, eagles soar, leopards growl, cheetahs growl, snakes slide, eagles glide, lizards crawl, jackals call, monkeys leap, snails creep, ants heap, fledglings peep, birds sing, wasps sting, panthers Talk and people talk. And that's end. Very good. Okay, so that was a long repeated language chart, wasn't it? But y'all did really good. I'm going to save it. Uh, there were lots of what? Rhyming what? Rhyme. Rhyming words in our repeated language chart. There were also lots of verbs, which are action words say verb did y'all watch my instagram video on kisses in kinder about verbs and how they are action words and movements real important that you learn those verbs before you move on to first grade. nouns verbs and adjectives okay okay all right we're going to move into math, and today in math, we're going to count and circle 10 objects. Count and circle 10 objects. Okay, we're going to place our onomatopoeia. Take that one down, move it over here. Okay, now, yesterday we started talking about 10 ones and blank, meaning we need to fill in the blank. Okay, first, I'm going to review with you our 10 frame, and we're going to do hide one. Now, here's zero, so we can't hide any. How many dots do you see? Now, remember, when we practice our fluency, that means to be what? Fast. 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 Okay, so as soon as I hold it up, name how many dots you see. Get ready? One. One. Now, how many do you see? Zero. Zero. How many? Two. Two. Now, how many? One. 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 Three. Now, how many? Two. Two. How many? Four. 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 How many? Three. Oh, somebody's sitting still. Hold on. So listen, um, when I show you one, we're hiding one. How many? You ready? Five. 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 Three. Four. 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 So all we're doing is subtracting one, taking away one. Nice. Stay with me. Okay, hold on, y'all. Okay. How many? Six. Six. How many? Five. Five. How many? Seven. 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 How many? Six. Six. Ooh, y'all are so fast. How many? Eight. 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 How many? Seven. Seven. How many? Eight. Eight. Nine. Nine. Eight. Eight. So each time we did that, we're just taking away one. How many? Ten. 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 How many? Nine. Nine. Your brain. 
Somebody's got bad feedback. Let me see. I can figure out who that is. It's not Kaylee. She's in there. Okay. Y'all sit real still. Okay. Now, um, let's put up our, let's see if you remember what this is called. I love that smile, Kaylee Allen, who's here ready to learn. What's this called? Number flame. Ten flame. Ten frame. I heard it. That sounded a little bit like, I mean, uh, Lily Grace, I think. This is your ten frame. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you how many. You tell me how many. How many do you see? One. One. Okay. Um, whoop. How many on top? Five. Oh, uh, very good. How many do you see? Six. 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 So when, when you're looking at your 10 frames, say five on top. Five on top. Five and on one top. Below. One below. One below. Thank you, Colt. Good job. So when you're looking at your 10 frame, you know there are five on top and one below to make six. How many now? Seven. Elise, let me seven. seven. Okay, five on top. Five on top. And two below. Two below. Okay. How many on top? Five. Five. Two below. Three. Three. So five and three is how many? Uh, nine. Mm. Eight. Five and three is eight. eight. Very good. How many on top? Nine. Five. Well, listen to my question. Y'all, you've always got to be a good listener. Listen to my question. How many on top? Five. Five. How many five. Below? Five. Four. 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 Good, Parker. How many all together? I'm trying to get our sound to come on. Nine. 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 Very good. Okay. How many on top? Five. Five. And how many below? I'm on the bottom. Ten. So it, mm, this is my question then, cousin. If you have five on top and five below, how many do we have? Ten. Ten. Y'all sit tight. Okay. So it, you've got to like kind of see the 10 frame in your brain. Just like when you're doing the five group in your brain. When you're doing math fluency, you have to be able to see. You have to be able to see it in your brain because when you're doing fluency, are you using your fingers to count? There we go. Uh, when we're counting in our head, are we using fingers? Are we using counters? No, no we use the no. circle. You have, to, you have to be able to see the circles, the dots in your brain, right? Okay. All right, now I'm gonna draw a gingerbread man. Don't laugh at my illustrations. I'm doing the best that I can, okay. First, I'm going to draw his head, then I'm going to draw his body, and then I'm going to give him two legs and two arms. There's my gingerbread man. Okay. Look, look, now, look his legs. There's his legs right there. One, two. Okay. Look, 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 I'm going to yeah, you have to make them thicker. You have to make his legs a little bit thicker. A little bit thicker. You want him to be a good cookie? Okay. Now. Yes. Listen, I'm going to draw some dots in a group. I'm going to count. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many are in that group? Ten. Ten. Say ten ones. Ten ones. Thank ten you, ones. James. How many do you see now? Two. Two. 
Say two ones. Two ones. Two ones. In this group, we have ten ones and two ones. Now you say it. Ten, ten ones. ones and two ones. Two ones. Now, don't shout it out. Raise your hand if you can tell me. Where did we put the two? We'll pretend they're sprinkles, okay? And we always need to dress up our gingerbread man. We're gonna pretend that these are sprinkles. Where do you think we should put the two sprinkles? Think about the gingerbread man, raise your hand. Where should we put the two sprinkles? Kaylee Martin, show me on your body. Where should we put the two sprinkles? Oh, you want me to do two sprinkles as the buttons. Okay, I want you to keep that in your brain. Okay, Kaylee? Okay, where should we put... Where should we put the two? Think about two. Think about two of something you have in your body. Eloise, do you know where we should put two sprinkles on the gingerbread man? Where would you put it? Did you draw a gingerbread man? Wait, hold on. Did you draw a gingerbread man? Yes? Let me see your paper. Let me see your paper. Parker, did you draw the gingerbread man? No? Okay. Eloise, did you draw the gingerbread man? Call yeah. did you? No? Okay. So what do you have two on your body? What do you have two of that we should use the sprinkles for? Uh, the button. button. On your body. What do we have two of? Ears. We do have two ears. What? Eyes. Eyes. Very good. Kaylee Martin, put that down, please. We're gonna give him two eyes. Now, Kaylee Martin, show me where I should put the 10 sprinkles. Show me again. Where should we put the 10 sprinkles? Show me. Show me on your body like you did. Where did we say we should put the 10 sprinkles? What do you think? Lucy, what do you think? Lucy, did you draw the gingerbread man? Where did you put, did you put the 10 sprinkles? Hold on, let me see. Oh, I see. Where did you put your 10 sprinkles, Lucy? On his body. <gasps> on his body. So they're going to be his buttons. How many do we have? 10. Let's do 10 buttons on our gingerbread man. Count with me. One, two, three. Four. I don't hear you counting. Five, five, five seven, eight, 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 nine, nine ten. Okay, so we have ten ones and two ones. But if we have ten sprinkles for his buttons and two sprinkles for his eyes, how many sprinkles does the gingerbread man have? Ten. Twelve. If you have Twelve. ten and two more. Twelve. He has. Twelve. Equals twelve. Twelve sprinkles. Twelve sprinkles. Listen one more time. Say ten ones and two ones. Ten ones and two ones. Ten ones and two ones. Thank you, Colt. Hey, by the way, while I have you all on here, I just want to tell you, uh, before we move on to something else, we're going to do some counting with our hands, the um, say 10 way. I want to tell each one of you that next, uh, no, on our very last day of summer school, because you've all done a really good job sticking with me, I know it's hard to get up in the morning in summertime. JP, do you want to get up in the morning in summertime and come to school? He says no, but I appreciate you getting up every morning and doing this with me. And I'm going to have a very special prize for you on our last day of summer school. So make sure you continue 
to work with us together, okay? And make sure you're participating. What's very important? Participating, right? Participation. I used to sing a song in my class. Participation. You remember that, Lily Grace? You know, it was a silly song, but it's always important to participate, even if you're right or wrong. It's always okay. All right. Now, I'm going to show you what 10 2 looks like the say 10 way. Watch me. 10 2. And that would be 12. Can you do it with me? Get your hands ready. Ten. 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 How many is 10 2? 12. 12. Very good. Let's do 10 1. Are you ready? 10, 10, 1. one. What comes next? A 10, 2. Then two. James Hudson's on fire. What comes after that? Three. I heard somebody that sounded like Lily Grace. And after ten, three comes ten, ten four. And then ten, ten five. Yeah, I heard Lucy that time. And then. Six. And then keep going. Six. And seven. seven. Keep going. Good, Kaylee. Eight. 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 And then. Ten. Nine. Nine. And the last one. Ten. Ten, ten. And if you have ten two times, do you know how many you have? Twenty. 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 Yay, very good. Okay. I'm going to get you to help me today, okay? All right, hold on. Okay. Um, all right. Look right here. We're going to make groups of ten ones and blank ones. Blank meaning we have to fill in the blank. Okay, let's count until we get to 10. Ready? Go. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. Five. Six. Six. Seven. 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 Eight. 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 Nine. 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 Ten. Six. Stop. I'm going to circle 10. Now we have 10 ones. Watch this, say 10 ones. 10 ones. And one one. Say 10 ones and one one. Okay, let's count the circles. We're gonna stop on. Ten. Sorry, delay there. Let's count. One. 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 Two. 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 Three. 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 Four. 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 Five. Five. Six. Six. Seven. Seven. Eight. 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 Nine. Nine. Ten. Ten. All right, so I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna circle 10. What number am I going to write? Three ones. What number Three am I going kids. to write? Uh, 10 ones. Three. How many ones do I have left? Three. 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 Say 10 ones. 10 ones. Ten ones. Ten ones. Ten three ones. Three, By the way, that's what this would look like. Ten, three. Whoops, sorry. Ten, three. Ten ones and three ones. The say ten way is ten, three. Okay, get ready to count. By the way, I definitely hear James Hudson and Colt. Good job. All right, let's count. One, one, two, two, three, three. 
four, four, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, nine, ten. What am I going to do? Circle it. Circle it. Circle. Ten ones. How many ones do I have left? Four. Well, carefully. Five. How many, Parker? Yes, Parker. Five. So how would I say this? Ten ones and five ones. Next time I'm going to ask you. Okay, let's count. By the way, gold star, James Hudson, gold star, Colt. One, one, two, two, three, four, five, six, six. Seven, eight, eight, nine, nine, ten. ten. So yeah. what do we need to do? Stop. Good, Lucy. And circle it. And circle. How many do we have in this group? Uh, ten. Ten what? One. Ten ones. All right, let's count the bottom. One, one, two, two three, three, four, five, five six. six. So what number do I write right here? Six. Six. Okay. And ones and six ones. Show me the math way. What does that look like? Show me the math way. What does 10 ones and six ones look like? Lucy's showing me. Let me see Lucy. 10 ones and six ones. She did 10, six. Very good. Kiss your brain. 10 ones and six ones. Do we know what number that is, by the way? If you have 10 ones and six ones? Lily Grace, what number would that be? 16. Very good. 10 ones and six ones. That's 16. Okay, we're going to do two more, okay? Then we'll be done. Uh, now, by the way, I'm going to put a little dot right there by that one because this is a circular configuration and I don't want to count it twice. Okay, count with me. We're going to stop on 10. Go. One, two, two three, three, four, four. Five, 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 six, 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 uh, four. 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 Who can tell me how to say this? Eloise, do you know, honey? Four. Oh, look, let me see. Say it one more time, Eloise. <laughs> Ten ones and? Four. Four ones. Four ones. Very good. Last one. Okay, this is a lot of X. Get ready. X's stand for kisses, by the way. So that's a lot of kisses. Okay. One, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm going to stop and circle. What number am I going to write? 
Ten ones. Very good. Now and let's count. And, and then the other one is ten. Say again. Ten. Ten. Now, how many do we have on bottom? Does anybody know correctly? Nine. 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 Colt. Oh my goodness, Colt didn't even have to count that. Let me tell you why. Because one less than ten is what, Colt? Nine. 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 Excellent. Say ten ones and nine ones. Ten ones and nine ones. Awesome, y'all. We will keep working on this. We're going to end with our kisses. Okay. Isaiah, you stay on your Okay. Kaylee, I'll see you at home. Yes. Uh, hope you have a good day. And don't I hope you have a good day too, walk. I love you. Don't don't get seen by don't get seen by any walls. I got seen by I hope one not. Wall. Oh my goodness, you too. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow, James. Oh. We saw. Oh, okay, bye. Bye, honey. We saw oh, big spider.